In 2016, a group of 30 people traveled to one of the remotest parts of the Sanskar Valley to light up the 2,500-year-old Fuktal Monastery with solar power. Now it lights up every night with the power of the sun. This year, NDTV and Global Himalayan Expedition will trek 50 kilometers beyond Fuktal and into the heart of the Zanskar Valley to bring solar power to one of the oldest and remotest villages of the Grand Himalayas, Shade. Electricity, the most versatile form of energy. All our daily activities are possible because we have access to this energy. I wake up at 7 o'clock. I have to go to the office in one hour. I have to prepare the breakfast for the children. I have to be prepared for myself. I have to be able to do this all the time because we have electricity. I give 300-400 coffee in the morning and I have a lot of benefit from my business. I have to press the button on the phone. In the healthcare profession, without electricity, we are nothing. Whether it's diagnosis, treatment, anything. We can't even begin even thinking what we would do without electricity. Energy has become central to practically every aspect of human existence. Yet, there are over one billion people in the world without access to electricity. <laughs> Despite advancements in the energy sector, universal energy access remains a dream. Traditional grid lines stretched with expanding cities. Even so, a large number of people were left out forcing them to depend on kerosene, diesel, and even wax candles for light. The logistics can be managed. You can run a line just about anywhere. Um, you can physically and, and technically get that electricity from the grid just about anywhere, but at what cost? And when you're talking about a remote village in the Himalayas or uh, um, sub-Saharan Africa, um, the economics of actually running that line are just prohibitive. Worldwide, almost two million deaths annually are associated with exposure to indoor pollution. Obviously, these are uh, pollu polluting uh, fuels. Uh, kerosene is not the sort of fuel that you want to be keeping within your abode, um, cooking or, or lighting with. It, it burns, it creates uh, um, emissions and those emissions are contained within the house that you're, you're in. Though the UN 2030 agenda aims to achieve universal energy access by the year 2030, there are still many challenges. We've looked at microgrids, we've looked at mini grids, we've looked at other standalone solutions that could work beyond the extremities of the grid to provide an alternative source of energy to, to rural communities. Remote villages for those that are not connected to the grid. Um, to adopt in preference to some of the other um, potential sources of energy that they have. That commercial solution is still in some sense eluding us though and we, we're yet to find something that truly works on a commercial basis. To learn about remote mountain communities, their problems and the available solutions, NDTV will travel to Ladakh whose valleys are home to over 3,000 villages, 
most of which do not have electricity. Ladakh, a cold, unforgiving desert, home to some of the highest mountain settlements in the world. It is now urbanizing and experiencing rural migration at a rapid pace. Tourism बढ़ने लगा, फिर लोगों ने यहाँ पर अपना अपना business कोई करगिल से है, कोई ये क्या कहता है, यहाँ के संस्कृत से है, लोग यहाँ पर business इसीलिए काफी लोग बढ़ गए। The first time I came to Ladakh was in 2003. Ever since then, I've made a few visits, and Ladakh seems to be changing constantly. You can now see a whole lot of new roads, too many vehicles, traffic jams, and also that peculiar smell of diesel in the air, which is unfortunately also the sign of development. Ladakh's government is mindful of the pollution and is making efforts to tackle the issue. Like in Ladakh area, we have a fragile environment. In Leh district, you don't have much plantation in greenery. Even Kargil, we have the same topography. So we say that uh, renewable is the best solution. Even like uh, most of the villages now, already government has installed DG sets. You, can, you say that how many, so many pollutions are going there. So Kerada is focusing to, uh, once uh, we install the solar photovoltaic power plants in village, we thought that uh, we should dismantle, yeah, we should uh, totally discontinue the use of DG sets. Now, the government of India is signing a lot of MOUs with other countries, especially mostly focusing on renewable energy. So we thought renewable energy is the future, you can say. Education and awareness have enabled Ladakh's urban population to make use of the renewable resources at hand. लद्दाख में आपने खुद देखे होंगे कि कहीं जगहों पे जैसे होटल्स में हो आपका सोलर वाटर हीटर लगा हुआ है इसी तरह सोलर लाइटिंग सिस्टम के लिए उन्हें सोलर पैनल्स लगा हुआ है इसी तरह गांव में भी आप कहीं जगह पे देखेंगे वहां पे भी आपका सोलर वाटर हीटर सोलर कुकर हद तक सोलर कुकर भी लगा हुआ है However it is Ladakh's rural population that is living the hardest life with no electricity poor education and health गांव में खासकर लाइट का बिल्कुल शॉर्टेज है इस वजह से हम सोलर पावर प्लांट को अगर यूज करेंगे तो फिर इस इससे हमें बहुत विंटर में खासकर बहुत फायदे होंगे गांव में बहुत सारे जगह ऐसे हैं जहां पे विंटर में खासकर जब बर्फ गिरते हैं 6 6 फुट 7 7 फुट जब बर्फ पड़ते हैं वहां पे पानी का फैसिलिटीज करना बहुत मुश्किल हो जाते but times are changing. After living without electricity for 90 years, Changna's village, Chakmakarpo, was electrified earlier this year. Interestingly, the job was done by two 30-year-old Ladakhi women who had also lived without electricity until recently when life took a turn for the duo. Sonam and Tenzin were employed by GHE's entrepreneur Dorje, who is also from their village. Uh, 
इसलिए हम लोग चले गया जिस गांव में लाइट नहीं है उसी गांव में जाके लाइट देते हैं हम लोग Sonam's village Sumda Chinmo was the first village to be electrified by GHE. In uh, 2013 when I was thinking of starting GHE, I first made a recce visit to Ladakh in July. I came to Ladakh after like 9 years and the second day I did a small trekking route to a village called Sumda Chinmo and the whole journey of uh, recce and survey in Ladakh at that time meeting some villagers and getting out of that troublesome time at 1 o'clock in the night uh confirmed that this is the place i should come to and and start doing something here the abundance of sunlight all year round motivated ghe to install solar microgrids in the remotest regions of ladakh their vision has helped thousands leap from the 19th century directly into the 21st so once you have light once you have electricity you can build on education you can set up education hubs where you know children can come and access offline internet that's what we have been doing in some of our uh, education hubs where kids can now access khan academy wikipedia ted talks on an offline server in these remote villages they are not connected to the internet but they still have the access to information with over 50 hamlets powered up ghe is seeking out more remote communities this year they have found shadi the remotest village of sanskar and ndtv will join them on an extreme expedition to bring light to the people of shadi